10 minute zero game, just um, practicing, shaking up the answer process as best possible, see if we do anything different, try and correct any actions that they use, excuse me, they usually take them. Let's just develop the knight attacking the pawn. Let's bring the bishop out, making space for castling. And when it's something new, diff different position doesn't feel right, let's take a little bit of time to soak in. So this opponent's being very aggressive attacking. We do have our pawn supporting any attempts here. We don't have to take, that is the thing. Sometimes you have to take, let's have a look. If we don't take and say we went and castled, then they took, then we took, then the knight would take. So it's probably best if we did on this occasion. Knight's looking for this pawn here, as we know. So we just bring the bishop here and support. So it feels a bit congested in the center. But if we can get our king safe, just play a little bit of defense nanny. Let's, wow, immediately straight ready to take. Is there an issue with that? Does he get to double up on this bishop? Let's castle. No, they don't have that time. So he's got an elevated pawn that's going to need support with all the other pieces. So they'll be focused on trying to strangulate the king area if we can't get rid of the pawn in time. We can hit the pawn, but I'm, I wouldn't be taking it anyway. So we can just move the knight out of the way, but I don't see there's a problem with that. Moving the knight is protecting the bishop. If the bishop takes, the knight can take. Yep, so he's got his rook fired up, ready to go into action. Trapped my bishop. Didn't even see that, did I? <laughs> so yet again, I'm going to lose another minor piece. How many times is this going to happen? So we could bring the rook across here. Or we could just take the pawn with the knight. So I think I'll take the pawn with the knight. So it's opening up my king, but maybe they're not going to take. Probably going to bring more pieces into the firing. So they're not doing that. So I'm going to hit the bishop, see what it actually wants to do, and hit it again to shoot it away. I don't know if that was a missed opportunity. We've ended up being plus one. But we feel a little bit harassed. Knight could go and attack the bishop again. Where is it going? It's not going to go there. It's not going to go here because it gets taken. It's attacking here. I'm actually... No, we're not. Oh, dear me. Getting into narration mode. Steady on. Queen can take it. So the queen's got a nice spot here coming for this pawn. So I don't really want to play defence and any rook coming across here. Maybe we'll bring the king up first. Rook can attack their pawn, give them something to think about. Let me get a rook rover type thing, maybe. Give them something to think about. The knight is protecting this area at the moment. We don't need to be overzealous, do we? No. Let's attack the pawn. The knight is protecting. Is it? Look, it's not coming here. It's not coming there. We don't have anything directly to attack it. It's on a white square. What's my queen doing? We need to get into the game. I'm getting a little bit anxious now. That my queen really isn't in the place. So probably bringing it up. To come across obviously the pawn drops but maybe take this knight that's a little bit too slow but we will give it a go anyway let's bring the queen up while wow, they're moving a bit quick so we could come across here still attacking the pawn I suppose the queen can come here but the rook can take it I'm going to go and see if they're going for the exchange if they're not we can take Oh, that's bad. Oh, I've just seen it. Damn, I've given up the bishop. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm literally going to cry. 
Oh, for crying out loud. We've given up the damn bishop. Oh, oh would you, Adam and Eve? After all that good work as well. Ah, oh, give me strength. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, that's so shabby. Narration mode is killing me. Tuck the pawn. Defend him, but it's not going to stay there for long. Bishop's just going to wipe it off the board. <sighs> okay. Didn't really want to come back with the rook, but it looks like I'm going to have to do that. Hmm. That's terrible. That's terrible. Obviously, the pawn just drops, or it can move out of the way. It does drop. Now my rook's in the centre of the board. Oh, he's got my pawn. Although I'm not under attack yet. But he can double up with his rook. I'm just attacking this pawn here. They can have all the fun attacking. Oh, my life. Didn't expect that. Let's bring this here. I'm going to have to bring this back. It's going to be too late though, because he's going to go there. Let's bring this back, see if we can get... Oh, steady on. Get across here, maybe. Oh, he's got away, he's got away. Put a check on, goes back. No. Oh. He escapes. Let's prepare. Maybe. Stopping it from coming here. And if we go like this, it is kind of blocked off, isn't he? Shall we just push the pawn up? Takes. He's got too much space around there, hasn't he? Let's go here. It's that dreaded knight is going to hurt us. If we get to here, then we checks, checks. We need, yeah, I knew it. But let's get the knight off the board. It's not equal. They're still plus one. Oh, this is going to hurt, isn't it? I don't really know if we've got enough. Let's go. So all I want is that basic battery, but his rook's just going to come here and defend. Let's get the king up. have this type of thing but then he can come here so let's forget any of that rook's coming here don't know why the tip let's take with a check get his rook off the board i don't think we are if we go here then he comes there then we come back then he can protect his rook damn damn Mm. Yeah, he's hiding, he's getting away. We don't want him getting away. Rook check. He still gets away, doesn't he? There. 
Running away. Running away. It's got too many pawns on this side. I can't, I don't think I can deal with them. This is highly elevated, this pawn. So should we be taking this pawn off and then trying to get this up rather than chasing his king around? I suppose this rook can just block it, but we maybe could get a queen. No, it's not going to get a queen. We'll maybe just get the rook off the board. Ooh, he's going. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't know how that's going to work, though. So I think we'll just get the rook off the board, won't we? This is going to go here. Yeah. Oh. Shiver me timbers. Put a check on. It's not hiding over here this time. It's coming up for the pawn. Cheeky. Look at you now. Take attacks. <laughs> No, that's not good. Take. Maybe the rook takes. I don't think so. He's just coming closer up, isn't he? Let's go here. Coming closer up, closer up, closer up. No, it's not. So we're going to get a draw. Yeah, that'll work for me. That will work for me. Yeah, thank you very much. It's not going for the draw. He's saying he's winning, he's plus one. Where's he hiding? He can't hide anywhere. Let's go. Oh, he moved off the thing before it actually went. I'll click in three fold repetition. I, oh, it's not come up. What does he think he's doing? You he might get checkmated. Oh, man, he keeps moving it before it actually flicks on. Oh, oh, that's a horse of a different colour, isn't it? Might be a mate. Might be a mate, dude. Should have taken the draw. Oh, my gosh, we're going to get a mate. Come on. This was one of those where we lost the minor piece again in the game. And again, it's turned around. It's not a mate, is it? It is a mate. I'm really pleased with that one. So now here, they've got, uh, what is it? They've got two minor pieces and we've only got one. And they're out and out winning here. It's plus four, it went plus five, plus five there. So that's when we said, well, if we see plus five, we've got to be concerned about it really um, a little bit. But we have converted these um, plus fives and minus fives. So again, it's having that kind of confidence to try and just find those better positions. It does improve your game if you just keep uh, plodding away. Yes, you might be losing on the evaluation side of things. And you know in your head you're losing because you've got less pieces on the board. So really, you shouldn't be winning. Let's just see how bad it actually got. No, it's just hovering around the plus five area. I might actually even change that now. You know, this plus five. I, I might change it. You know, I'm, I'm actually even going to dare to change it to like, plus, go for plus seven. That's an area for serious concern. Because we seem to be able to claw it back in the plus fives. And the, we started with plus, five, plus two or minus two. Then we bumped it up to plus five. Um, but I think consistently we seem to be sort of performing 
quite comfortably with the plus fives or the minus fives. So I think going for a plus seven, I've got to remember that we've changed it to plus seven. Let's see if we see any sevens in here. Because then that gives me a realistic um, area to say, right, okay, that's what I need to start paying attention to. All right, so pushing through, starting to claw things back a little bit. And it was a draw. He could have gone for the draw, but because the plus one, the feeling, the winning. Oh, that's looking hefty. Minus three, minus four. But as we know, that can change. I probably did something wrong here. It's gone minus something. No, minus four. Minus four. Yeah, yeah draw. So I'm happy going for the draw because we had a minor piece anyway. So we swindled our way to this position. So I think they should have just gone for the draw. But they got carried away. And that's the gold. Same mate in six there. Excellent. Okay, 10 and 0. Again, just um, practicing the answer process. Just trying to shake it up a little bit. Let's just um, defend the pawn. It's something I've been practicing when it comes to people offering the gambits and stuff like that. So I'm staying away from what I usually do and I'm practicing this new movement. It's not a new concept, it's just a new movement. And I find that when they do do the gambits, if you simply just bring, if there's a pawn that can support the pawn, just bring this pawn up and support it. And it takes away any fancy business. And then once that second move has been made, like what they've just done there, then you can take the pawn. So long as you've got this pawn here ready to go. So I'm going to bring this bishop here now. And it kind of works for all any type of gambit and stuff, even during mid-game, wherever. Um, if you've got a supporting pawn that can support it, rather than doing fancy manoeuvres to try and um, circumvent it. So I'm going to castle. So it feels a bit hefty with them being in the centre here. So they're looking to get some big attacks going on. Tempting to go here, but he's just going to drop the pawn. So I'm just going to do a simple pawn manoeuvre like this, just to meet this type of situation. So one of them is going to give. Let's get this bishop into action. Could still bring it back and then the pawn takes, pawn takes, but we lose out a little bit. So he's not happy with the... So we could take the knight off the board. Brings the rook into the centre of the board, which is a bit uncomfortable for them. Is there any elements of this? Not really. Bishop doesn't have any protection. Knight's ready to get into the game. So we bring the knight in. Are we going to rule the day with this knight coming here or something? I'm going to just bring the knight up. Get it into the game, looking to attack the bishop coming this way. But there's going to be a move order of something going on here. Are we ready for it? He's got like a few pieces protecting this square. So I think that's going to be the dominating factor here. Pushing this pawn. Like I said, we're not precious about the bishop. You know, we could take or we could bring the bishop back. Attacking their bishop. And just to see what happens in the center so that we can get rid of the stuff. I do believe they're probably going to push. If they do push, do we kind of lose out? They push, we take. Say they take, they're on the bishop. Bishop could come back to attack this pawn. Rook comes to defend. Bishop's going to need to come back here. Looks a little bit too much, but... Mm. Take. Rook comes into the centre of the board. That looks ugly for them. We do have smaller piece attacking a higher piece here. If we attack... Something telling me to bring it back and attack the bishop. But, eh, 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 eh. 
What am I missing? Might rue the day that I don't take the night though. Come here. Come there. Knight comes down to attack. No, he's not going to do that. The bishop's got no protection. So what if the bishop did actually take? Then we take. Then they push. Onto the knight. We attack. His knight takes. Messes up the pawns a little bit. I am going to take the knight off the board. Keep it simple. As nice as it looked, it just looked like there's so many variables. I, I, I wasn't catching up with myself in the calculation. It probably was the ideal way to go. But it got a little bit too complicated. Oh, and they've left the game. Yes, because I took too long. Yes, that's what we're talking. Oh, he's back. Oh. <laughs> he's back. Damn. Okay. So there is elements of pushing here, smaller piece attacking a higher piece, but you could always drop onto our knight as well. So we did mention this. There is also the knight coming to attack the bishop. Okay, got the knight attacking the bishop here. It more opens up access to the king in their king going this way than this. It's sending their bishop to attack our king area. Just try to use some sort of basic logic. I'm going to attack the bishop and see if there's any potential for us getting into their king area. I opened up a can of worms. Mm, they've gone into the tank. Oh, they've gone into the tank and it looks like they've left the game. Maybe they've got a bad signal. He can always bring his bishop right back here. He can bring his bishop there. He can bring the bishop Bishop there, didn't have to do anything. Could even attack our knight. Just thinking of still getting this in here, attacking the queen for a bit of a tempo. But we probably are ending up chopping the knight. So we're in no need to get carried away with anything. Doesn't look like they're coming back. They've left the game. Let's have a quick shift. It's probably not going to show too much of um, an evaluation. Yeah, so uh, plus 1.5, like we say, that's never here nor there. Our new thing is um, seven either way, so it's, uh, yeah, it could have gone there. I'm not playing against the computer, though. Definitely not playing against the computer, so there's no point doing that because then he can just drop here and he's got the support of the bishop as well. It's saying the smaller piece attacking the higher piece here. There's no smoke in this one, is there? Just comes down and attacks here. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So we weren't playing too bad there. Obviously a bit too much for the player. I'm going to have to play another one because I can't really go out like that. Okay, just bear with us one second. All right, turn and oh. Let's shake up the answer to chess. Knowledge box. Shuffle the deck. Okay, we'll just bring this knight out as we do. Get rid of narration mode. Let's castle. So that's the usual stuff. But try and improve the calculation now. So they've castled. Do have space. Shall we just do a small pawn move like this and attack the bishop? And the knight just jump. Oops. Knight just jumps in as usual. No, okay, we take the bishop in this circumstance. 
so it doesn't feel too bad for us. Not just yet, because Knight takes, Pawn takes, we lose the Pawn. So this jammed in looking position here, I tend to go here and here and here, if I get the time to. Majority of the time I don't get that time, so I will then go, oh, I'll attack the bishop. Because knights hunt the bishops in our mantra the majority of the time, based on what we have covered. Not all the time, because it's not always a good capture with the knight. So we've got protection here. They're attacking our bad bishop. So I'm happy with that. Let's take. Okay, so we could move the bishop, but I don't see there's any point. It's going to get taken anyway, and it is the bad bishop. So I'm not sure whether or not they're actually going to take. So I'm inclined to push and hit this pawn. make their mind up as to whether they're going to take or not I'm going to grab so they're delaying oh, okay they are taking so we could take with the knight but i think we want to get the rook off the back because we want to help support this rook and we can just drop back a little bit if the knight wants to get fancy the queen can take king supporting yeah it looks like they coming in and doubling up and stuff themselves knight still got this space here don't want to uglify the pawns I don't think and they're in he's brought his queen there so that he's protecting the knight so I'm going to take with a check on the king take again with a check on the king alright hit the knight don't know where it's wanting to go let's hit it So again, don't want to uglify the pawns, but we might have to just hang fire for now. So if we go here, we're sort of facing the knight with the potential for <laughs> trying to push the pawns up onto it. But obviously the king's going to move. So we'll do that. Obviously the pawn's going to drop to stop this pawn from hitting the knight. So it's moved the knight already. We've got a bit of position here where we could attack their queen. Whether they go for the exchange or not, I don't know. If they forget themselves, we have the stealth knight. Oh, he does capture. Okay. So this knight's looking to whirlwind now to try and get this pawn. So we have a pawn majority. They've got a pawn majority here in the center. So they're attacking already. So do we go... Do we? That's the question. So if we take, then it's a two on one with the pawns. He's wanting to keep his knight here to stop our knight from getting activated. So if we push. Is it this one or this one? Yeah, let's push because we don't want the knight being able to jump and maybe start moving the king up. He's wanting to get rid of our knight. Going for an exchange. Let's push the king. So we could go and attack their pawn, but it just drops down. So we could attack their knight. I don't think they're going to exchange though. I think that oh, they have done. Right, so does this give us a bit of a lead? Uh, let's hit. Don't do any preemptive stuff. Let's go. Mm -mm. So we can come over and get this pawn. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we need to do. Let's grab. Well, don't do any preemptives. It might do a funky. Yeah, let's take. Let's take. Let's move up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, queen, and they've left the game, excellent, 
well not left the game, I think they resigned. Brilliant. Okay, so that's that's the last one for today. And just looking at shaking up the answer process, the mantra, and trying to do things a little bit differently, but also really a, a t- more tightened focus on calculation. Um, it doesn't always work perfectly, as we've shown. And But one of the key things really is around it doesn't, as far as my games have been going at the minute and the ones where I'm focusing and actually putting the effort in, um, in terms of the answer process, losing minor pieces does not mean you've lost the game. Losing a pawn, losing a minor piece, it is annoying. I do still beat myself up because I'm thinking, well, how did that happen? I did my calculation. What the, what, what the heck went wrong there? But it's that resolve, and that's what is helping improve a little bit the quality of my games. And they're still ugly. It's still absolute complete carnage. But I'm loving it even more. I'm enjoying the games even more. So that's it for now. The absolute carnage session is over.